All right, good afternoon, everybody. So we're back at it again today. And if you'll notice, or if you saw the last video, we did some electroporation te tests using used, electro, uh, used cubettes, and they worked out great. And we got some good results, so I know what a good result looks like. So now we're gonna go back to using bacteria. And this morning I prepared a new plate, put about 150 microliters of freshly cultured DH5 alpha onto this. So this should have a nice thin lawn that we can use to prepare some more electrocompetent cells. If you remember from the last video, that requires that we wash them three times for about four minutes a piece with fresh DDH2O, and then we'll create a final suspension of 40 microliters. But I think what I'm gonna do this time is because I still don't know exactly how much of the bacteria to take off of here and put into that final 40 milliliter suspension. So the way that I think I'm gonna go around that and it should allow me to run multiple attempts is I'm gonna scrape some of that off. I'm gonna put it in about one milliliter of uh, water, wash it each time with the same amount of water. But on the final one, instead of respending the whole thing in 40 microliters, Maybe I'll do a higher dilution and then I can aliquot that into three or four tubes, however many attempts that I want to make. So let me get the camera set up and then I will prepare these competent cells and then I'll join you on the other side when we make our attempts. Before we get started, one thing I am going to do a little bit different is I do want to keep continuing to use the chill DDH2O, which I normally keep in the refrigerator. So what I've done is just created a glass of ice water so that I can keep it in there in between washes. And it keeps this nice and cool and it keeps the bacteria from overheating. Even though part of what we're trying to do is test the paper that says keep everything at room temperature. I just think, uh, you know, it's worked for me for so long in working with bacteria and keeping them cool. It makes intuitive sense to me that the hotter they get, the more likely they are to die. And so we, we need as many bacteria to live as possible to take in our DNA and keep our transformation rates up. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna do this. So if you see this, that's what this is all about. All right, so I have here the final resuspension of the bacteria that I've scraped off the plate. And the protocol calls for a final resuspension of 40 microliters, and then that's what would go into the electroporation cuvette. But because I suspect that I've been using too high of a concentration of bacterial cells, what I did was I diluted this by a factor of 10. So instead of putting 40 microliters of water and having a very uh, strong concentration of bacterial cells, I diluted it by a factor of 10. So now I can just draw off 40 microliters and try that instead. And if that works, then we can talk about perhaps moving on to using DNA. One thing again, I'm not testing is whether or not shocking it keeps the cells alive. You know, I've done it so many times that it seems to be even when it goes wrong, some cells still live. So I'm going to save the materials and the time for when we start to use DNA. So let's take this over to the electroporation machine and uh, go ahead and prepare the cuvettes and then give them a go. 
All right, so I'll have the machine set up and my little work area on top of the refrigerator here. And I'll tell you what I've got. So I have some alcohol, so of course we can sterilize our hands. I have the cuvettes. These are the used ones that I used uh, last time uh, in a previous video. So we're gonna try those. And then I have some that are also used here. <clears throat> these are slightly less used than these. And then I have my pipetter here set to 40 microliters. And then of course I have the bacterial suspension right here. So let's go ahead and load up a couple of these cuvettes and see if we can't give them a shock and see how it goes. you guys we have four cuvettes here ready to give a give a sh next shot here so let's go ahead and get everything set up so we have everything turned on we're going to set the volts to 1.8 kilovolts and I'm gonna take one of the cuvettes and I'm gonna give it a little tap This is a two millimeter cuvette used, but washed. If it's gonna spark or explode, it's gonna be right here. So let's, let's give it a go. Hey, no sparking, 4.6. That worked great. One test down. Let's do the next one. Oh, that one popped. Did you see that? 0.5 constant. Okay. Not sure what was different about that. This is I can just tell by looking at it, this is one of the cuvettes that had a lot of that residual, like burn-in from previous trials. I'm gonna set that one aside. It may just be now beyond its life. Okay, here's the one millimeter cuvette. Also, did I tap that last one down? I maybe didn't. Hey, no spark, no pop. 4.1, not as, not quite the five, a little low, but it worked. No spark, awesome. Okay, final test here. Use cuvette, you can see a lot of residual stuff around. So this'll be, this'll be a good test here. Awesome, no pop, no spark, 4.1, seems to be within the acceptable range. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so let's do a quick review of what happened here. Um, okay, another great set of tests today. And the main thing that I did was I used a more dilute suspension of bacteria. You know, when we tested the water and the water worked just fine, but then I had that first test with bacteria did not work out so well. So it looks like diluting the final suspension by a factor of 10 and then aliquoting that into each of these seems to have worked. 
These are all four tests today are using used electric or used cuvettes. This is a one millimeter cuvette. These are two millimeter cuvettes. This is the only one that sparked. I don't know if you could see that on camera. I think I was looking and you, you couldn't really see it. This is the only one that sparked, but if you look at it, it also just looks like it's got a bunch of residual stuff uh, kind of caked on in there or burnt in. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. And I think maybe that has contributed to the failure for this one. So I'm probably gonna toss this one, go ahead and clean those so that I can reuse them. And then guys, what we're gonna do on our next test is we are gonna go ahead and start using some DNA. And I'm gonna start taking some of the DNA plasmid that I have both in the refrigerator and then in the freezer. And I'm gonna start mixing it in to my final suspensions here. So that when we run the shocking or when we shock it, that DNA gets zapped in there. And then we'll have to recover it. We'll have to do selection plates. So we'll have quite a bit of work ahead of us to kind of continue down this journey of learning electroporation. But we're making fantastic progress in just a couple of weeks here. And just to remind you of what we're, what we're trying to do, what our goal here is that we're trying to work our way up to, well, one, this is good practice. Um, this is, I'm learning a new tool. This tool can be used to engineer fungus. It can be used to engineer yeast, E. coli, all kinds of bacteria, but it can also be used to engineer or transform um, agrobacteria, agrobacterium tumefaciens. And that's ultimately why I'm doing all of this is so that I can practice so that when I buy the, the agrobacteria cells, which only come, I think I'm only going to get three or four vials of it. And one of them I'm going to keep just so I can have a culture of it for the future. But they're already uh, electro competent, so I don't need to wash them. I can just zap them right away. So I needed to go through all of this so that I could practice uh, using it so that I know what a good result looks like. What does a bad result look like? And then, yeah, the other part of this is I need to work out my workflow here for recovery and plating and all that stuff, which should be much easier than all of this just work. So another great day of tests. We had three successful runs with the diluted bacterial suspension. We had one that did not work. I think that's because it was the, the used cuvette that maybe wasn't washed well or just beyond its lifespan. And, um, that's it, guys. We'll see you next time.